Hey, I'm Martin, this is Not Enough Tech, and welcome back to the first video in 2018. First of all, apologies. Uh, I know I've been quiet over the qu Christmas, and then I ended up in a hospital, but I'm better now. And we're here with a Google notification tutorial. So if you fancy learning how to make your Google Home speak, that's the tutorial. First of all, before we dive in into the tutorial part, uh, in the description of this video, you can find a written tutorial with the written guide. And I'd strongly recommend you to watch this video and also watch or uh, well, read actually uh, this article before you ask any questions. Both combined, you should give you uh, enough information to go forward. So let's get started. How does it work? Uh, some of you probably know I'm running no dread on my Raspberry Pi uh, Zero. Raspberry Pi Zero costs like $5 and it's really not to have uh, it in your home if you're considering home automation. So uh, there is a special mode now that allows you to um, send notifications to Google Home. The notifications are limited to 200 characters, but let's face it, this is plenty. All you have to do is just to go to the website and um, install this via um, SSH so via your console, or just go to Node-RED and Palette settings, and you can install it, just search for Google, and you'll see it just there to, for you to install. Once everything is installed, uh, you'll see after restarting your Raspberry Pi, there is a new node for you to use, and how it works. Basically, search online for your Raspberry Pi, uh, sorry, not for Raspberry Pi, for your Google Home IP, and um, note the IP and uh, write down in the config. And then you can pass any config string, um, any string to, to make the Google uh, speak. So let's try it out. I'll just uh, use the string, hey, I'm working, and let's make uh, my Google Home speak. Hey, I'm working. As you can see, everything is working great. So let's go ahead and see how this is set up. There's few things you can do with this. Uh, don't get scared from this flow. I know it might look slightly intimidating at first, but it's a very simple flow in general. So what this can do? Basically, you can enable Google uh, notifications from the Google speaker by voice control. You can enable them by uh, from mobile with a tasker. You can enable them with Alexa if you want to, or from the PC itself. And the notifications, at least in my tutorial, are split between to, uh, like in two sections, notifications from uh, mobile and other notifications. Uh, in this tutorial, I'll show you how to do this and how to split this notification so you can disable mobile notifications only, so things like SM, uh, SMS messages and emails, etc., won't disturb you, while retaining other notifications as well, uh, and also how to toggle this uh, remotely by saying a command. So for example, what I can do is say, hey Google, Turn the notifications off. Sure. Today. Notifications are disabled. You have to forgive me the waiting time because uh, I'm using if for that, so I'll more on that later. So, uh, since we know we can enable it and disable it with the various sources, let's go ahead and see how these are um, configured. My notifications are split into two types. Mobile notifications, which are handled by this function, and the PC notification in this case. Uh, it's a status update online and offline uh, that are issued from the computer and event ghost. So let's enable the system again. And then let's issue the notification. Notifications are enabled. As you can see, executing this Python script in here, I can pretend that I turned on the, my computer. PC is online. As you can see, if my PC is being turned on, uh, you'll hear this uh, notification being said. Now, how does it work? Mobile notifications are slightly different. If you see into the function node, I have a small script that takes information from the mobile about the issuing app, about the text and the title of the notification, and formats it into a neat response. So, for example, if I get an email from a person saying something, uh, it will say, you have a notification from... 
an app which is going to be displayed, let's say, Gmail. So you have notification from Gmail uh, saying, and it's going to give me a contact detail of that person and the headline or subject line of this uh, email, for, for instance. Uh, obviously, for um, text messages, it might be formatted slightly different, etc. So that's what it does. Now, there is a switch node that handles it and basically divides, uh, checks the notification uh, that has been submitted via post and uh, divides it, uh, whether it's a mobile notification or it's an other notification. And the division is done based on the app value. So if I have a payload.app, if that is set, and it's only being set if it's a mobile notification, it's obviously treated as a mobile notification, otherwise it goes uh, via a different route. Now, then in line I have, is this flow enabled? This is just a node, a switch node that names this entire flow and enables it and disables it. Because if I receive any of the uh, post notification, uh, I don't want them constantly be ringing into my Google Home and all the notification. I want to have a possibility of uh, turning it on and turning it off. And that's basically, this is the control node in here. And that control node is handled by this of a mess above. So you know about this and you know about how to send a notification. Let's talk more about controlling it. Um, for troubleshooting purposes, I've got a manual setup here so I can turn off and on notifications using this manual injection nodes. Notifications are disabled. However, everything else is handled by the post, uh, HTTP post request as well. So when I send a post request to this directory, uh, uh, I've checked what is in obviously this response, whether it's on and off, and based on that response, I toggle uh, this node in here. So basically, this noggle, uh, this node, it will check uh, flow name G Home Copy, and this is your G Home Copy, and we'll set it to on and off. If that's on, the flow uh, below here works and it passes the messages. If it's off in, in here, then obviously this flow stops in here because this node is disabled. So that's how it works. That notification is then obviously later passed on and there is a small notification being sent to Google Home saying notifications are enabled or disabled. In addition to that, I also linked Alexa because hey, why not? I've talked about Alexa and linking the Alexa in uh, with uh, Node Red. So you can have a look in, uh, in here, I'll link um, tutorial uh, in this video as well. But basically what I did, I've created, I've logged into my account, I've created a new device called Notifications. I know it's a little bit tricky, but it works. If you select uh, options coming with this device on and off, then you can obviously say to Alexa, Alexa, turn notifications on. Okay. Notifications are enabled. And as you can see, it works even quicker than using if service. Now I've mentioned if service because that's the only workable solution I found so far to pass the uh, post HTTP request from Google Home. So let's take a look at my request. When I say turn the notification and then on and off, uh, obviously this is supplemented by a dollar symbol. So you have to um, use the ingredient um, Google Assistant uh, save phrase with uh, ingredient text ingredient which you're gonna use later and uh, link it to a webhook and then what you have to do first of all remember about HTTP if you don't enter HTTP or HTTPS if uh, your uh, service certified it won't work and your IP and the port and the working directory in here then you select it as a post and we're passing a JSON and this is where the on and off value will uh, come into handy because they embed it into that text field with double curly brackets and the entire thing is formatted as JSON. So I'm passing a value, G -home, uh, the key uh, as G Home notification with a value, whatever is included and closed into that uh, text field. Now, there is another thing you can control via Google Home and this is uh, Tasker setup. You can enable Tasker or disable tasker and uh, associate it with it notifications. 
And to do this, you can do it directly from Metasker, or you can do it uh, from Google Home itself. So let's uh, have a look and see how it works. Hey Google, tell Auto Voice to read notifications. Sure, let's get Auto Voice. Command send read notifications. And as you can see in here, uh, all the notifications are right now being passed over to my Google Home. Obviously, the notifications are selected to be passed over, and we're going to talk about Tasker setup in a second. Uh, you'll see on this in this auto notification um, information I have two buttons as well. I can stop the service altogether directly from a phone, or I can stop entire notifications being sent from a computer or the sources uh, to my Google Home. Let's take a look inside the task and see how it works. Uh, first of all, I've got three tasks. The profile is quite simple. Now, cast to uh, Google Home is just a post request. We know we're passing, the, uh, um, passing all the information as a post request. And so obviously, you're going to need your IP for the server. You need a path, which is the same path as in your node red, which is here. Excellent and you need to pass the data you want to pass. Uh, I'm passing the app, title, and text, and this is all contained within the variables um, from auto notification. So I've got an app, untitled, and, and a and text. And just remember to keep them in the separate lines, otherwise the formatting will be messed up. Now, if you scroll down, make sure also to select trust and the certificate. And that's it. That is linked to your profile which is uh, start G Home. No, sorry, it's not, it's G Home Casting, which is auto notification intercept, uh, looking up a few applications like Gmail or messaging app, that's all. Obviously, feel free to modify it, it will work regardless for you. Now, to enable and disable it from out, uh, using either auto voice or button on the screen from here, all you have to do is just toggle this uh, notification here. And that's pretty much it. And this is handled obviously by Tasker. So let's take a look how starting the system work. So what happened is uh, I can either uh, use, I can use the auto voice recognized command. So I'm going to say, hey, uh, my speaker, uh, tell auto voice to start it. And it will start a service, display the information, and it will uh, turn on the profile, which uh, the profile which is Gmail casting. I also, will issue a special notification to create this notification in here. So previously, I talked about near perfect notification system, which I use. For basically, you paste a string, and it creates from that string a notifications of your choice with all the buttons, icons, and everything. It's a really good system, and you should check it out. Uh, in the link in here, especially if you're going to use ready files, otherwise you'll have to modify this part. Now, so that's happened when the notifications are enabled. Now, what happens when the not why I want to stop notifications? I have a uh, stop notification task in here, and it's linked to two profiles. One profile is for uh, auto voice, so I can uh, say to Google to stop it, and it will perform exactly the same action as uh, when I would press on stop or stop all. No, stop. Stop all will um, basically cancel all together on the node red rather than locally on Tasker. So let's take a look into this uh, uh, task. Uh, it might seem daunting at first, but let me collapse all the if options. We have really two options if, but I've included enable all, which isn't really in use, but you can use this enable all to kind of add this third button and enable the service from wherever you are within the tasker so you can link it to something else or when you're coming home etc so that's for your pleasure so we're not going to talk about the last condition we're gonna talk about the first condition first condition basically what happens uh, if auto app message or auto voice command are correct because it's or so let's let's actually open this up uh, if auto app message equals stop or if auto voice command equals stop notifications uh, then what's going to happen we're going to cancel this notification from here uh, we're going to turn off the uh, casting profile and then flash a short notification that's it now if we click on this notification here if we click on stop all uh, the second if option will uh, get executed obviously we're going to cancel uh, the uh, notification itself but we're also going to issue a post request to our Node-RED 
which is going to hit this post request and tell um, Node-RED to disable the notifications altogether. Last profile I've got is to handle the commands that are being issued uh, via the button in, buttons in the notification. So stop all and etc. So basically, it's because it's linked to the same profile, whenever command is being passed, I will look it up and see if the notification, um, if that command uh, it's been stop all, it will execute this. If this command was uh, stop, it will execute this. Uh, and obviously, if the command was enable all, it will execute the third option. And if, you're, um, you, if you use the out of voice command instead, uh, it will uh, obviously evaluate the first option and perform whatever happens there. So I just needed an extra command um, profile to handle all the buttons for me. And that's the last uh, profile in this setup. So, as usual guys, thanks so much for watching. Um, if you've got any questions, just do check the article out. It's a link at the end of this video and also in the description of this video as well. Do follow me on social media, go and check out my Patreon page if you're interested in supporting me and having an access or early access to all my content. Also, the free. It helps me out a lot, so uh, yeah. I'll leave it to you, you know how YouTube works, you know how social media works, just just go and do your thing. And good luck with your Google Home notifications, take care, bye.